Hello, welcome to Cryptaxium on Monday, the April the 10th, 2023. It's a bank holiday Monday, and I hope you've all had a good Easter break. And we're here on his first episode for Cryptaxium. Um, I'm sure many more will come in the time coming. And we've got a special guest who's, uh, I, I have to say, the pleasure of speaking to. And I also appreciate the time he's given to come and join us today. Uh, it's Gregory Manorino. How are you doing, Greg? Doing great. Thanks for having me. Been looking forward to doing this. And, uh, well, here we are. Right, I'm just going to bring you up on the screen. And I've also got your traderschoice.net website link at the bottom for people who are listening in. Want to check it out, feel free. Uh, I'll just introduce the panel members. So we've got uh, Stav with us. Hey, Stav, how are you doing? Not bad, thanks for your Jay Fi. All good. Good stuff. Uh, we've got Jeff. How are you doing, Jeff? Yeah, pretty good, mate. Not three bad, thanks. You? Yeah, doing good. And Julian, we've got Julian. How are you doing? All right, nice to speak to you all. Nice. So we're mainly all based in UK, other than Greg, who's uh, across the pond from us in America. Uh, is it Las Vegas, Greg, or did you, you did say you moved, so I don't know where you are now. It's kind of irrelevant no, here in America. Still here in, in Las Vegas, Nevada, but honestly looking to get out of here. This place is uh, it's coming apart from, for many, many reasons. Uh, anyway, yeah, I, I probably am not going to be here much, much longer. Is this the new place? Uh, as I do recall, you did say you did a move. Did you not go through with that move? Or? Yeah, I, I moved, well, I moved within Las Vegas. Um, I did take in um, an elderly gentleman to take care of him, um, one of the last Pearl Harbor survivors. He needed somewhere to stay, so I bought a bigger house. And he lived with me until his passing just several months ago, unfortunately. But he, he did live to 99 years old, so we got to give him that. Yeah, I do yeah. recall that on some of your videos. God bless him, man. Rest in peace. Yeah, big um, respect. Big respect. So today, we don't really have a script. Uh, we have many topics. We've probably got about 45 minutes with Greg that he's kindly donated to us. Um, so I'll just uh, open up the mics for anyone to speak. And the, the gist of the topic is really a decentralized free market as such. Uh, we're going to be discussing solutions and ways people can go about that. We're not going to be giving financial advice as um, us in the UK. Although we do have freedom of speech, they do tell us it's not absolute. Um, but Greg's got his first amendment. Um, so you'll probably be able to divulge more to us. Um, so the mic's open for anybody. I don't know where you want to start with this, Greg. Feel free to uh, introduce yourself. All right, well, to... yeah, let's start yeah, off with this. Yeah. You know, my, my dream really would be that we had uh, a, a free market, a, a global free market economy not controlled by these central banks. And that's all they're doing here is exerting control on the world here, uh, creating uh, a, a, a completely absolutely fake distorted in environment here and i and there's no this is not by accident i think all of us here would agree on that we see things developing in a way that we would expect that if anyone that has followed my work is saying wow you know this is going exactly the way uh, we had said it would from from years and years ago and i i believe the situation is going to get even worse if we just look at the current situation here understanding uh if we just look at the big picture and you you guys all know i'm a macro guy looking at the the current global hyper debt situation here which is going to get much worse in, until it doesn't until the central banks are ready to uh, issue in a completely new system of a lot more control care um they're doing everything in their power to keep the system going to keep it propped up and and by doing so they've stripped out every single shred or everything that would have to do with a free market or a free market economy is completely managed. Um, and it's, it's this, the price uh, we're all paying a terrible price for that uh, in the form of inflation here around the world uh, and people willingly surrendering up their, surrendering their, their liberties being dependent on this global central bank run system here. Uh, it's a twisted system. And unfortunately, as, as I say all the time, I don't think we've seen anything yet here with regard to that. I also believe that the central banks are um, and none more so here than the Fed is, is ready to roll out or very close to roll out their new uh, central bank digital currency here. They're putting all the pieces to pl uh, in, in place here. Um, with regard to this integration, the word that's being used by the mainstream uh, media with regard to the banking sector, uh, it's a consolidation in my view. And then we got this Fed now thing. 
Uh, so all the pieces are there. Uh, what they need to do uh, to really get this going uh, is pretty simple in my view. They have to finish bringing down the current system. And, uh, and we're seeing the current system free fall right now. Central banks are in, are in have been for years uh, in a race to the bottom. Who can suck the purchasing power of their currency out faster? Um, I really believe this is a coordinated effort. I don't think anything happens by accident with regard to central banks who, in fact, do coordinate their effort here. Um, so, you know, they're all working towards that goal. And the goal is about control. If we could find all of us and, you know, this, the, 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 the issue is there's not enough of us who want an alternative system. People are, are so dependent on the current system, on the central bank system. This is why we're not seeing revolutions or revolts anywhere around the world. Well, actually, that's not really true. Certain parts of the world, we're seeing people, you know, uh, maybe take take Rise steps to try to get th things changed. But not here in the United States. I don't know what it's like over by you, but out here, th this is a nation of sheep. Unfortunately, on an on an epic scale, no one does anything. They'll just do what they're told, and and this is part of the mechanism as well. Here, you know, just sit there, take it, deal with it. And uh, and smile while you're while, while you're doing it. Unfortunately, that's what's happened here in the United States. It's uh, it's a terrible thing. Yeah, I think uh, many on this panel tonight all see the uh, bigger picture that you speak of. Um, maybe through different avenues, we've all reached it. Uh, and uh, there is no really it is the central banks that do run the world. We are quite aware of that. Uh, and if anybody is in any doubt, maybe if you've checked the recent Christine Lagarde. Um, spoof video that was done on there and um, that quite is revealing in itself so uh, and many people are aware about the threats of nuclear war and things like that but i don't think too many people really appreciate what this inflation is doing and intends to do more uh, in the fact that it's literally just pricing people out of existence um is there anything that you, you could add to that Absolutely. I've been telling, I don't know how long I've been explaining that this is, in fact, a title of a video that I did, and maybe it was even yesterday, was this is an extermination here. They're eliminating an entire class of people on a worldwide scale, the, the middle class. Um, I've told people for many, many years, they have a target on their face. It's tattooed on in the shape in, and, and they can't wash it off. Um, and they're, they're being systematically erased, exterminated here. We're going back into a new feudal system on a worldwide scale here. Extreme haves, extreme have-nots here. Um, you know, the that that's that's the bottom line. And and, and again, it, I can't believe people are are not do, they're not doing anything about it. They just see most people have no idea that they're, they're they're distracted by. You know, this, that, and the other thing. They're told to look over here when they should be looking in the totally opposite direction. It's the manipulation of the media, which is also controlled, in my view, by central banks here. In the United States, it's the Federal Reserve. They control the flow of information. They control the economy, the markets, the financial system, everything. Um, they're the government. They have become the government, at least here in the United States. And I'm, I'm sure it's the same by you as well. This is uh, it, it's an effort that they've all put into effect over a century ago. And it really is moving towards that um that time where, uh, you know, it's, it's an amazing thing how people have no spines anymore. They become worms. Uh, you, me, people who listen to our shows here, we're the resistance in many ways. We got to get the knowledge out there, the information out there. Maybe people will wake up to the fact of what's happening to, happening to them. But even with that, I, I think, you know, the lulling of the people into, uh, in, into this, this, distorted reality that has no bearing on reality, unfortunately, is it's in full swing. And people don't know what to do. Again, they're they're being deceived, they're being decepted, they're told to look here, then look over there. But that's exactly what's going on here. And it, it's going to accelerate. There's no way that things are going to change here. This is again um a, a playbook that central banks collectively have been using for decades. Uh, we're living in the side effect of that. They're stringing the people along to bring about a new system of full control. Um, and, and how they get to do that, the main weapon, how they weaponize the system is um, by forcing people to become dependent on the current system, on the central bank system. Uh, and then, of course, when they're ready, they'll issue in their new system and people are going to beg for help. It's always the same story, you know, problem, reaction, solution. Here's the problem. They create it. 
wait for the reaction, okay, and then they also have the solution. These, that's exactly what's happening here. But it's a slow burn. It's been happening over a very, very long period of time. And that's um, the, the genius of it in, in many ways. Because if this were abrupt, people would revolt. But people, people adjust, say, okay, you know what? I'll take on a little bit more debt. Okay, I won't save any money. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'm willing to pay X amount of more for, for what I have to uh, buy to sustain myself or whatever it might be. They think it's normal, but it's not normal. It's pressure. It's unrelenting. And in my view, it's going to get a lot, lot, lot worse moving forward. Yeah, indeed. I'm from the point of view that, you know, the central banks are the problem, but also society in itself and the people that make it up. Um, the society is killing us as much as the inflation and the central banks are. Uh, and I did struggle with how to uh, handle this talk with you today, Greg, uh, as we've got many people who, who follow your work who are aware of this. Um, but at the same time, we need to bring in the people that aren't aware. Uh, I, I'm, and as difficult as that is, maybe some, some of the people out there uh, are not built for it and they may never be built for it. But at the same time, it's both sides of the party I'm trying to bring in with this uh, talk with you today uh, in the hope that for those that aren't aware of it, uh, become aware of it and, and follow some of your work because you, you've done your blog for what, is it over 10 years now you've been working on your blog That's, it's, yeah, it's been a while and you will make a difference I mean look my blog has gotten pretty big over the years, but if I were eating Tide Pods or licking toilet bowls, I've had millions of followers. You know, that's yeah. what people. You're right. It is just a problem with society today, uh, and it's it, it's this kind of uh, cognitive dissonance, I guess. Um, you know, people just they just find a, I guess, a coping mechanism. I mean, and what what kind of a society would people get off watching people eat Tide Pods and licking public toilet bowls? But this is what we've devolved into here. When you hit anybody with some kind of uh, uh, intellectual uh, thing, they don't want to hear it. They block it. They, it becomes too much work for them to absorb. And then, if, and then for, for people to sit back and realize that they really don't have a voice, they, they don't want to hear that either. Understanding that... Um, you know, their votes don't count. There's no representation anymore. It's um, it's just the system has been perverted to, to that degree. So people, they, they, they can't, they don't know how to deal with it. So what they do um, with with me, for example, and many people, they lash out. They don't want to hear it. They uh, You tell people just a shred of truth and they hate you, that you, you become public enemy number one. But I think if people sit back and really take it all in and, and say, you know what, this is interesting, you know, um, I heard this on this show and I want to look into this myself. Is this really what's going on? And, and I think we are getting through to people. It's, t it's a slow process. It's very, very slow. And I think also it comes down to a natural selection, uh, a level of intellect that, that some people have maybe a, a, a above and beyond the next guy, able to think outside the box to a certain degree. Uh, most people are kept inside the box, told what to think, told what to do, told what to wear, told what to look. You know, that's just the way it is dictated by the mainstream propaganda. So when they turn on a show like this here and they hear this stuff, they, initially people don't know what to do. I've had this experience thousands and thousands of times over the years and say, Greg, I used to listen to your work and I thought you were a fruitcake. I thought you were out there. And then all of a sudden I got an epiphany and I came back and said, wow, you, you're hundred percent right. So it takes time for sometimes people hear something that it sits in their mind a little bit. They, they sleep on it. They dwell on it. it. may take a week, maybe take a month, maybe take a year or two. Then they come around. So I think in the current situation where people are struggling and the situation is being made worse and worse and worse for them, they, they start to they start to maybe wake up a little bit. They're lulled out of their slumber that they've been deliberately put into. What should people do? Number one, turn off all of the mainstream propaganda. Listen to shows like this. Use your own intellect. Think for yourself. Um, don't rely on what this person may say, the authority figures that they float out that consistently lie to us here. Okay, the, they float out this person to say that because they're a, they have a big lofty name or a title and they're a treasury secretary or a Fed president or Christine Lagarde. Oh, yeah, you know, you got to listen to these people because they're, you know, they know what they're talking about. Once people can break away from that and start to think for themselves, they're going to be a lot better off. Yeah, well, I love a comfort zone as much as the next person, but I struggle to find one these days. Um, uh, and we've, we've said it over the years um, with, the, with the guys on the panel here, uh, if they were just were honest and came out with it 
and at least told us where we stand. At least that's a little something for us. And I think over the past previous years, especially since COVID, that has been the case. I think they're pretty obvious about it and blatant about it now. Um, but we just want a system where we can opt out or just not get involved. Individual sovereignty is important to me and I'm sure to many others. I'm not here to try and like take on the power of the Fed or the central banks. I'm aware of the power that they've got. That's not what I'm trying to do. I just want to try and like pass the information around just to try and bring people to a level of awareness to see what's coming our way so we can at least avoid some of it, if not all of it. And, and together, if those that do make it through can rebuild some sort of um, community for one and hopefully a decentralised free market um, if that's ever possible. So we're going to be discussing on that a bit more. I'm going to open the panel up for the other guys as they've been sat quiet. So I don't know, maybe have some questions for you, maybe have some things to put to you, Greg. Uh, we'll just take it as it as it goes, really. So if anybody else on the panel here wants to mic up and, and maybe I'd ask like Greg. To, I'd like to say a couple of things. Yeah, you go on, Jeff. You have nothing and you will be happy. <laughs> this is what they want for us, to own nothing and be happy. How do they do that? Pretty simple, really. All they do is they don't give you enough money to buy anything anyway, except for um, your your average consumable stuff, like a bit of food, um, uh, pay your rent. Um, so you'll have limits on your uh, gross basic income or um, what is it? Universal basic income. Um, so and it'll have an expiry date or something like that along those lines. So I think we got a solution. And it's very old fashioned and it may come down to it. Uh, it's not the ideal solution, but, you know, uh, barter. We'd be, you know, I'll swap an, an apple for two of your oranges or whatever. If it goes back to that, that would be a wake up call for people. You know, I mean, what can they do? Um, do, you not, do you not see that as, as a step back? Because I, I know a few course. people have the view of it as a step back rather than a progression. But you're dealing purely with resources rather than these fake currencies and stuff. So, you know, the only thing is, I mean, even then, they've got the power with the police to, to turn around and, and, like, confiscate your apples and oranges or whatever if you're dealing with resources. I mean, Stalin did that. Was it Stalin or something like that? One of them took all the crops off the farmers and stuff like that. It could resort to that, and that would be a massive wake-up call for people. Because they they see you know the writing on the wall, what it's all about. But um, I mean, ultimately, are they going to go to those sort of extremes to stop you bartering on the street or or whatever? Who knows? I don't know. It's just an idea. I, 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 right I like the concept. I like. The, I wish people would look. What do they want? The, whatever they want us to do, we need to do something different. Just like you're alluding to here. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, for example, they want us in their system. They don't want us transacting in anything but their system here. What's wrong with people doing what you just said? Look, I got gold and silver all over my freaking desk over here. If 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 uh, if I wanted to buy something with gold and or silver, I would hope someone would accept it. I was selling a car of mine recently. Of course, I would have accepted gold, silver, cryptocurrency. You know, something to circumvent their system. Absolutely. Uh, it's it's an it's an astonishing thing that people have lost the ability to realize that we don't have to be sucked into their system and only use their system here. Why can't we transact? And see, the thing is that people right now, with regard to let's say gold and silver and or even cryptocurrencies, that they're hoarding it. They're not using it as a, a mode of exchange, unfortunately. Um, and I think the I think that the central banks are going to capitalize on that. For example, with their own uh, central bank issued digital currency, they realize. You know, let, let me talk about this a little bit more while we're on the topic, because I I keep getting bombarded with questions from people about well, Greg, once central banks or the Fed issues their uh, their central bank digital currencies, they're going to crush other cryptocurrencies. I don't think so, and I'll tell you why because. As I just said, people, what they're doing with cryptos for the most part is they're holders. They're holding on to it. They're not using it to exchange generally. Um, and the, the Fed's going to, and other central banks are going to capitalize on that by issuing a digital currency that we can and will have no choice but to transact in. So I don't really feel, 
and I, and you see, look, this is another one, one of the things that I want people to take away. Whenever people can point their fingers at something like a big event, oh, that's going to be a black swan, or this is going to be the reason why people are not going to do this. Soon as that becomes part of the normal conversation, you know, that's not what it is. When, when something, let's say, for example, is going to hit the system as in a true black swan event or something, it's going to be it's going to be way out of left field, something that nobody sees coming, not that something you see coming. So when I hear people say, oh, well, you know, Central, you should not hold. I'm a, I'm a cryptocurrency advocate. I think most of you probably know that. I've taken a lot of heat for it over the years, and I don't really give a damn because I see a progression of things coming down the pike here. And you probably all know what I'm talking about. I eventually see a debt market implosion, rates spiking in an uncontrolled fashion, melting down global stock markets. Cash is just going to move into other assets. It's going to move into commodities. I've been saying this for the longest time here. We've got some pretty big names now sounding exactly like Greg Manorino these days saying the same thing. And I also believe it's going to make its way into cryptocurrencies as well. Uh, cash doesn't just fly away to money heaven. So, so anyway, with regard to the threat of, let's say, cryptocurrencies from a central bank issue, I, I, they're totally different animals. One people hoard, the other one people are going to be using to transact in, and central banks know that. So they're going to uh, capitalize on it, in my view. I, I believe with every fiber of my being that there is no way uh, that we can circumvent a central bank issued digital currency that's been in the works for years, years and years and years and years. And, and finally, they're literally putting all the pieces together. We can see it. Just open your eyes. Fed now, consolidation of the banking system here. Uh, uh, what central banks have been doing collectively for uh, forever, you know, devaluing their currency, sucking the purchasing power out of it. Uh, and we're told this is all by accident. You got to be kidding me. They really want us to believe that. They, you know, there maybe are some people that are that dumb. But I, I believe all of you here and people that follow our work are, are not that stupid. We realize what's happening. We understand what they're doing. It's so obvious. It's so in our face. But we need to take action against it, in my view. And I've been what if, for over 10 years, I've been telling people two things. Bet against the debt and become your own central bank. I initially started this telling people, this is what you need. Look, I don't sell this stuff. All right. I just, I own it and uh, I own platinum and palladium as well here. I'm what you would probably call someone that is a holder of these things. Um, I, I started buying silver, my gosh, when it was like six bucks or so. I bought all the way up to the high and then I bought all the way down and Started buying gold. Oh my goodness! I don't even remember when I started buying gold. Probably when it was only a couple hundred bucks. Um, but the, you know, but these things, in my view, are massively undervalued along with cryptocurrencies. And yeah, I know a lot of people don't like this stuff. And it's not a matter of oh, I hate it for this, that, or the other reason, or I like it for this, that, or the other reason. I just feel that when the system becomes real, okay. Um, and cash just moves or looks for places to go, it's going to end up in, obviously, commodities, in aggregate, crude oil as well, things that are real, and, of course, uh, cryptos as well. I just feel that way. I, I, I just – what I do is I try to ascertain what I believe is the most likely scenario to unfold when, let's say, the debt market – uh, implodes. Everything is, and I covered this yesterday, I believe, cause and effect, cause and effect. This cause causes this action. Um, and this is how I've been able to stay ahead of the curve for, for, for years. It's not a hard thing to do. You're not going to be a rocket scientist. You've got to be some kind of like, you know, brain surgeon to figure this stuff out. It just seems pretty evident to me by the evidence that we can see that we can actually, that we don't even have to speculate. We can see what's happening. And by seeing what's happening, we can take the best action. That's all I do. Well, the feeling, the feeling is mutual for myself. Uh, I, I'm not speaking for anybody else on the panel, but I, I'm sure it's the same for them as well. Um, we've got Julian. I'd like to give Julian a chance to speak now, uh, if you're there, Julian. Yeah, yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, I'm very interested in everything we're discussing. Um, I think, you know, obviously uh, the system will collapse, um, as Greg says. Um, it's sort of designed to. Um, but I think when it does, uh, that's the possibility of revolution um, then when you get hyperinflation and so on. And the central banks would be running in as the rescuer with their new central bank digital currencies. 
Um, I personally believe in, you know, gold and silver and, the, and platinum and so on. But um, I think that cryptocurrencies are just a distraction and weaken our strength. If all the, if all the money that was going into cryptocurrencies was going into silver and gold, then silver and gold would be at much higher levels. Um, and the central banks hopefully would have been stripped of their gold. Um, that's just my view. I, th I think platinum is an interesting subject as well, um, but that's more to do with the new green economy um, that's sort of coming with green energy. You know, let me just play off of something that you just said. It's kind of interesting. So what we're seeing here, uh, cryptocurrencies in aggregate at one point had a, 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 a pretty large market cap. In other words, they were probably as big as a, one, a, a Dow component. Now, as of late, we've seen... Uh, the cryptocurrency space get get decimated. Uh, it, it's got cut by almost two thirds the the overall market cap of of cryptocurrencies. And I think a lot of this is fear driven. Uh, obviously, a, a lot of stuff going on. There's a lot of uh, propaganda out there. And in my view, look, whenever I see something like this, just light bulbs go off in my head. I can't help myself. When I see, for example, let's say. Cryptocurrencies, which, which at one point like had a, a much larger market cap than they do now, get cut by two thirds. I gotta say, you know something? Here may be an opportunity. I I bought. I, I got out of crypto for a while. I, I got out of everything. I at one point just I couldn't handle this. It really got to me. I just dumped it all, and that allowed me to reset myself. Once you know, look, this stuff. I do it every day, twice a day, and. Sometimes it gets to me and I was kind of losing my mojo a little bit. So I said, okay, Greg, take a step back. So I started buying Bitcoin around 17,500. 17, um, I bought a little more at 19,000. I, I think looking at the crypto space, understanding that it's gotten pretty much decimated as of late. I don't know. My brain just works in a weird way. When I see something like that, it's like, okay, if people are fearful and they want to get out of it, that means maybe I should be looking to get into it. It's the same thing with the stock market. If I watch the market take a massive hit, I say, okay, why are people running for the doors? Maybe there's something that's on sale here. You know, that's kind of my, how my brain always works. And I, I can't turn it off. Sometimes I wish I could. Um, <laughs> we'll see. But with regard with regard to any of this stuff, look, you have you can't just jump in to any asset, any asset class, whatever it might be, without having a, a real full understanding of why you're doing it. Why, for example, let's say, oh, someone says, I want to buy stock XYZ, or I want to buy cryptocurrencies, or I want to buy gold and silver. They go, don't just go out there and just go and just blindly buy things. Think about why. Why is it that you're doing this at this time? Okay, why is it because I think it's undervalued? Me, I tell people all the time, when I, and people continue to bombard me literally every day of my life. Why, why, Greg? Why do you say that silver is so, the most undervalued asset in the world? Why, Greg, do you love gold? Um, and, and, you know, I, I wrote a paper on this. I put it out in my newsletter recently. Oh, I just look at a couple of metrics. This is not complicated. And I'll just outline it really fast here. I look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average and gold. There is something called the Dow Gold Ratio, the ratio of the Dow Jones Industrial Average to gold. And then I look at the gold silver ratio. And I say, OK, so right now, just just look at the gold silver ratio. We're at like 88 to 1. It's crazy. It's really, really distorted. This is going, I think, to normalize to 15 to 1, maybe even 10. 10 to 1, um, the gold-silver ratio at one point. And with regard to the Dow, I believe because the market is so absolutely distorted, there's no base, basis of reality, and we don't even know where the bottom is with regard to the Dow Jones Industrial Average here, I think we're going to get a par. I think we could see Dow gold 1 to 1 at one point here. So where's the bottom of the Dow? I don't know. No one knows where it is. We do know that the Fed jumped in here at 6,000. We know that for a fact, the quantitative easing one could have been much lower had the Fed not jumped in at Dow 6,000. It could have been 4,000. I don't know. But what I'm, I say is, okay, if the bottom is 6,000, let's just throw a number out here, then gold will be 6,000. And, and uh, silver could go to 10 to 1. Uh, I think that if you look at that, the it's 88 to 1 with regard to gold to silver right now. And that gap, this, in my view, cannot 
possibly not at least normalized to a 15 to one at one point here. So that makes silver to me massively, massively, massively undervalued. Um, but we'll see again. It's just a matter of understanding that cash will just move. Cash moves through markets in relatively predictable patterns. When you have an environment like we have now, central banks have engineered this uh, risk on environment, meaning cash going into equities because they suppress rates for so long here, it creates distortions. It creates uh, an environment of, of, of com that's completely fake. Uh, you, you know, things that used to matter, forward guidance, PE ratios, well, it doesn't matter anymore. It's um, And then this is a global phenomenon. It's just the, the markets of the world have become worse than a Las Vegas casino. I mean, there's not, it's not even close. Um, does it mean there's not money to be made here? Does it mean if, if you're smart enough, you can't navigate through these markets here? But understanding the bigger picture, realizing that eventually, and that looks like we're all on the same page, this whole thing is going to get very real. You just want to put yourself in the right spots for what's coming down the pike. That's that's it. That's And, and, and I think it's pretty simple to understand that. So that, that's really how I feel and how I come to the conclusion that, that silver is so undervalued and gold is massively undervalued. And I think cryptocurrencies right now probably pre present a very good opportunity for people who are long-term holders of this stuff. Um, but it also presents an opportunity for the Federal Reserve and other central banks to issue their digital currency because they know people are going to hold the other stuff and they transact in the central bank stuff. It's a totally different thing. And Could I be wrong on this? Absolutely, I could. But I just I tell people what I think and, and right or wrong. You, you guys all know my style. Some people like it. Some people don't. I just tell people what's on my mind and I say it in a very direct way. And uh, sometimes people don't like it too much. <laughs> Can I ask, um, do you see uh, silver being um, valued much higher in the future because of um, consumption in, um, you know, the electrification of cars and um transport and so on because obviously electricity is um silver's the best conductor of electric so you should get a better performance out of a, an electric car with silver and there could mm -hmm. be some compromise where you have silver plating on on motor windings and batteries mm -hmm. and so on yeah. um do you sort of see that driving um the price of silver higher or do you think it's just people stacking silver coins that's going to drive the price much higher multifactorial absolutely that plays a role in it medicinal purposes as well here weapons weapon systems use silver and that's just gone once it, once they uh, b destroy a weapon some some missiles have hundreds of pounds of it in there um yeah absolutely the, the, there are multiple factors as to why i love this stuff i i love this stuff i really really do it's probably my largest holding is is physical silver um I just can't imagine an, another scenario where this stuff is going to skyrocket in value um, j just based on the stuff we're talking about alone, forgetting about where the market might go and how the debt market might have caused, will cause an implosion in the stock market and cash is just going to move. Um, risk off, risk on, will we become risk, risk off? It's always the same story. Markets risk on, risk off, risk on. But we've never seen anything like this. And markets are not allowed to correct anymore. You don't have, you don't have, a, you know, a market move of 20, 25 percent, 30 percent in a major index is not really that out there. These are normal moves. Um, but it doesn't happen anymore. You don't see it. Uh, and this is, you know, central banks propping up the markets here, creating the environment of risk, keeping rates suppressed. Cash just makes its way into the stock market. Why do people think, for example, central banks decided to keep to push rates down, get in here and start buying all, all the debt here? Uh, they did it deliberately to create an environment of risk, to push cash into the equity markets of the world, to reinflate a housing bubble. Anyway, that's um, that's it. Um, I just saw something pop up. What are we going to sell into? Uh, well, that's, that's, a, that's probably a great question, too. I mean, eventually, again, so understanding that risk off, risk on, risk off, risk on. I believe at one point here we're going to get the stock market to bottom out wherever it bottoms out. Who who, who freaking knows here could be much, much, much lower than most people think. Could be 6,000, could be lower than 6,000. We don't know. Uh, could be 8,000. I, I, I don't know. But there's going to be a time to reallocate cash back into other things from risk off to risk on. 
Uh, it's just a never ending cycle. It just always goes on like that, on and on and on. So, you know, let's say, for example, that market implodes, stock market, stocks sell off. We get a spiking in commodities here. I hope people are, are paying attention to what I'm saying here. Commodities, you know, skyrocket in price. Okay, you know what? We we dump that stuff. We, at, we reallocate funds into what then would be undervalued. And you just ride that wave up. It, it, it's not hard. It's it's really not hard, um, in my view, to, to, to just think about how it'll play out moving forward. Yeah. Anything else to add, Julia? Um, well, what's your view on uh, platinum? You said you were quite interested in platinum, Greg. Um, you know, I think we're an interesting inflection because you've got um, catalytic converter recycling, which is sort of flooding the market and creating, um, driving the price down. But um, you've got um, electrolyzer and fuel cells, which both currently use quite a lot of platinum um, in, in a hydrogen future. And something else I re recently didn't realize was that um, the uh, storage um, um, vessels that store uh, compressed hydrogen are often um, have got a liner of platinum in them because it stops the hydrogen seeping out of the materials. Um, mm -hmm. So all of those things are for the future, which I think could drive the price of platinum much, much higher. But what's your view of uh, those precious metals? I love them. I own them too. <laughs> I own them all. I own them all. I, I think all platinum, palladium, gold, silver, uh, people need them all. You need them all. It's, an, it's a really nice way to hedge yourself for the future, in my view, uh, understanding all the things that you just outlined and realizing, again, where cash is eventually just going to move at one point here. So these, these things just, to me, they've been literally what I would say no-brainers for over yeah. an entire decade. Yeah. And it just really makes sense to me that this is where people need to look. If you know, this is what we're talking about here is all things from a wealth perspective, but it goes beyond that too. And I try to explain that to people how we need to, you know, have each other's backs, get together with like-minded people here, um, understanding where this whole thing is eventually going to go. Um, and where it's being driven to and how none of it, none of it at all whatsoever is, is, is by accident. It's just being driven that way, this way by central banks who are hell bent on, it sounds like science fiction, but are hell bent on, on dominating the entire world, stripping people of their freedoms, of their liberties, um, you know, being, being told what to do, when to do it. Uh, almost living the life like like an animal does here, and and that's another part of it too. You know, talking about society as we, as one of you had brought up earlier, has 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 devolved. People don't think they want to. They want not only do they want the government, the government, to take care of them from cradle to grave. They want to be told what to do, when to do it. And that's a frightening prospect to me. You know, I, I would like, and I, you know, if someone tries to, if someone were to dictate to me how I should live my life, I'm going to say, hold on a minute here. First of all, who are you uh, to try to tell me how I should live my life or what I should do with my life here or where I should put money to work or whatever it might be. Uh, and second of all, I have to sit back and say, okay, what does this person actually want? Uh, they, they want a society of, of conforming, zombified, um, people that will tolerate whatever is thrown at them. Be happy with the scraps, okay? Uh, don't complain. Just just be happy and be content with whatever measly existence we're allowing you to to have. And and that's part of the whole system too. Is the dependency the uh, the, the maybe also you see what they're doing here? They're playing mind, a mind game. It's a psyop on people. They they want people to feel a sense of hopelessness, confusion. Uh, anger, all the emotions. They want to bring out emotion in people, henceforth why they you see things flash across the media, for example, that they know is going to get people going. Um, because again, once people start fixating on something like that and they get all those emotions inside them that are running wild, they can't focus on anything else at all. 
It's, it's, it's a game that's been played on the public since time immemorial, and it won't ever stop. It's how the few have controlled the, the masses forever here. So there's so, so many facets to what we're seeing and how it's playing out. And it, I don't think it's a surprise to anybody, I, I, anybody who has the ability to just think a little bit. I want people to think. When I, um, with, with my blog, for example, I don't, when I tell people this all the time, if you hear something that I say, don't take my word for it, please do your own research. Say, you know what? I want to see if Greg is right. I'm going to look into it. You know, this is how it starts, how people start. You got to be inquisitive in life. You don't want to have someone sit here, anybody, I don't care who they may be, and dictate and dictate and dictate. Are they right? Are they wrong? I'm not right all the time. I could have something completely wrong, and I'm willing to learn too. I mean, that's another thing. People can't ha adopt the mentality that they know it all already. You, generally in life, and I think most of you would probably agree, if not all of you, the person who believes they are the smartest person in the room is probably the stupidest person in the room. You know, you have to have the ability to, you know, change with things moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that, Greg. Well, I'm a political atheist and I can't think of anything worse than, than being told what to do. Um, and I, I want to say the same for staff who we've got on who's not yet a chance to speak to you. So I'll bring staff on. Um, and if you've got anything to say to Greg, then feel free. Uh, no, really, I left a few comments. That's what Greg could hear coming up. The beep, beep, yeah, I saw them pop up. I didn't get a chance to read it. <laughs> it's, it's, if anybody wants to read it, it's just, it's just my thoughts on the whole general topic and subject of this whole event. Well, just put, just, just put it to him, Stav, because we've got five, ten minutes left with him. And, um, rather well, than well, read it. The, the, so I've read, so I'm led to believe. Um, that a lot of people, there's a lot of people out there who don't even understand what decentralized blockchain systems are. They have no idea on understanding how it works. I'm, uh -huh. I'm in my mid-60s. I'm an old geezer, right? My parents fought in the war, et cetera, et cetera. And they did know what was happening, by the way. They mm. certainly did. But having, trying to tell their children what was really going on was quite difficult without things happening. Let's leave that there. So basically, if if all I would say to people is, if if I can learn new tech, how it works at my age, and I come from a working class background of living on farms in a decentralized kind of way, that's where mm -hmm. I come from. And um, so I know what freedom really feels like. It's very hard physically, but it's it, it can be attained. Well, it used to be able to growing up in the 60s and teenager in the 70s. So I kind of, I've kind of lived a little bit. So uh, it's not come off the internet. My thoughts don't come just straight off the internet, which is difficult for young people today who were born into this, some people call a beast system. Right? So I, I sympathize with the youth today. I, I think they've had a bad deal, right? And they are, a lot of elderly people will say, well, they don't know nothing. They're not thinking straight. They're not. Well, I would suggest people who don't know anything about blockchain and this new tech, uh, let's forget about all the conspiracies, the the um, the um, the banks, the digital banks going down, the you know uh, whatever it was, Silicon Valley Bank and this big scam with the FTX and all of this stuff, which is plenty of evidence to say it was one big setup. But I'll leave it there. We'll leave it there. But anyway, that's just my thoughts. I can't prove anything. I know. No. Great thought. You're right, and you're you're 100 right again. Look, people. First of all, people are afraid of change, and people don't want to learn anything. They feel like it's too hard to learn things, and that's a problem. I think you know, um, growing up, uh, I guess I was a little different than my sisters. I grew up. I have two younger sisters, and they seem to just you know frolic around. And I love my sisters. They got me wrong, but they just kind of they didn't. I was always a person that wanted to know why something works. I. I used to tear apart things in my house. For example, when my parents were out, I tore apart the vacuum cleaner. I wanted to know why, why did it work? And then I would try to figure out how to put it together. Like, what does this piece do? And what does that piece do? I love knowing that. And you're absolutely 100% right again, is when people hear things, for example, like well, a blockchain or about this, and then they get really confused to, when people and angry, I think, at the financial system, they see all the corruption. They don't want to get involved in it. They think it's too hard. But it's really it's really not. Um, investing has become a, a, 
<laughs> in this market here that's not real, uh, uh, it, it's kind of an interesting place to navigate. And it, it, it's, it's, it's kind of difficult in a way. Um, and I just, again, focus with regard to the market. I just look at the drivers of the market. I don't focus on the Dow Jones Industrial Average here in the United States. That's what they want us to focus on. The 30 companies here all the time. It's, they, don't, they barely talk about the broader market. It's always the Dow, the Dow, the Dow. But what about the drivers of the market here? That's what I like to look at. That tells me, it dictates to me where the market's going to go. I, as most of you probably know, right on my website, I got uh, the MMRI, Manorino Market Risk Indicator, which breaks this all down very, very simply into risk levels of the market, understanding where things are right now, understanding that there's a massive effort to buy more debt, to keep rates suppressed by central banks around the world. What are they trying to do? Despite the fact that the economy is cratering around the world, they're trying to drive up the stock market also as a distraction mechanism, also as to eventually trap as many people as they possibly can in it because it's going to come down. And when it comes down, it's going to come down so fast and so hard. It's going to take people by surprise as it always does. Oh, and no one saw this one coming like the banking crisis. Are you kidding me? We all knew this was coming from at least eight months ago. You guys probably you guys follow my work. Eight months ago, what did I say? No no deposits, no loans, no deals. These banks, there's a problem here. Uh, no one saw that coming, even though the Fed admitted they knew it in November that there was a problem. They did nothing, really? Everyone thinks this just happened by mistake? No, it's that consolidation. But this is why people avoid looking at this stuff. They, they find it, it gives them a headache. Me, I want to know why it's all happening. I think all of us are very clear as to why and how and who's doing it. And what maybe we can do about it. And I, that's what's really fantastic about this particular show is we're sitting here and we're talking about solutions. What can people do? Well, I've got a suggestion for you, Greg. I'm not sure if it's one you'll entertain. Uh, we all know you for your mantras and your, your funny faces and things that you do, especially the most loved one, the goal. Everybody on your live stream mentions the goal. Now, I thought of a concept. Would it not be interesting if you made these images in an NFT, a non-fungible token. Would that be something that you didn't tend to thought of? I, 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 you know, I never thought about it. Uh, is it something that could be done? Why Why not? Uh, yeah. sure, it, sure it could. It's kind of Simple, funny. simple. Uh, there's lots, lots of ways that people can can do things like that and try to make the, make the system work for them. And I'm all for it. I'm all for any kind of anything that is going to help people get through what's coming here down the pike. Absolutely. So if someone wants to do something like that, let's, let's just, let's, let's go ahead and do it. Yeah. It does, uh, it does sound very uh, a positive for on my part. Anyway, I thought I'd mention that to you. <laughs> there you um, go. You've been given the nod there, uh, PJ. So uh, as a challenge for you, Greg's challenger, you make up some NFTs. I'm sure they're selling like hotcakes as good as Donald Trump ones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, That's so, so more than your, your, your funny faces and your gold and silver in your eyelids and things like that, a lot of people are really wanting to see you play your guitar, Greg, just before we, we close this show. Is there any possibility of just a few chords from your guitar? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Let's see what we can do. I don't know. Uh, what, do you, what do you want to do? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, so we, I, don't, I don't play as much as I used to. Uh, how about, uh, let's see, who, who's got, how, how about Hurdy Gurdy Man? Uh, then when the hurdy gurdy man came singing songs of love. <laughs> yeah, Donovan. That's Donovan. Hey, great. Is that, is that, a, is that a Gibson? Um, that's a Gibson standard, is it, Cherry? That, that, that particular, that's a Mitchell. Um, oh, I, I just picked this thing up recently. It's a, it's like kind of a knockoff of a Les Paul. It looks like yeah. one. Hey, this uh, is oh, it costs a lot less. Listen, I got I got a couple of Les Pauls. I got one in a case that doesn't. Occasionally, I take it out and I look at it, but I, I play the other one, which is a a Chinese knockoff. But what a guitar! Oh my God! Yeah. They say people copy, yeah. But anyway, that's that's a that's a confession. Oh, I play a Chinese guitar, um, and I've got several guitars. And I used to play in rock bands. I've retired now because it's most of the places, Greg. I used to play at. They're not closed down. They've been demolished. And turned into blocks of <laughs> <laughs> so, but I'm with you on the guitars and collectors' pieces. If people think that gold, they're all of this is gold, silver, and metals, items like that 
uh, and I, I love your drag racing, by the way. I'm a big fan of, of bike drag racing. I watch Cycle Drag on YouTube. Is it Jack, I think, who does the show? Some of those motorcycles blow me away. They really do. These big Suzuki Hayabusa's and stuff. I love the cars, too, the funny cars and the car that you've got. And keep it going, because I know the I boys... Love the, uh... I'm I know the boys are struggling. I know they're struggling. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome stuff. That feeling of acceleration, I just, it gives, it makes me like, I don't know, it gives me a buzz. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I had a motorcycle and, uh, yeah, I used to do crazy things. Speed is, uh, as you get addicted to. I'm a big fan of the Isle of Man TT races. I don't know if you know anything about that. That's road racing around the island. It's, it's the most dangerous motorsport in the world. But I understand why they do it, even though several of them come a cropper every year. But I, I get it because I had a motorcycle. I lost a few friends. Uh, there is that negative side of it, but there's nothing like speed and being a boy. It doesn't have a negative team. side. Everything I, has a positive and a negative yeah, side. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's absolutely. Tough. Uh, yes. stuff what Greg was doing there with the hurdy gurdy thing uh, that reminded me of Neil off the young ones when he did uh, his <laughs> song oh wow well, hurdy gurdy mushroom man locked himself in a frying pan heavy <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's it well listen look, I'm going to shut up I'll put a few comments if that, I don't know whether PJ wants to save them or do anything whether they're relevant or, or whatever but yeah a lot of there's a lot of lot of people out there on YouTube. Some of them are quite young. There's a guy called Ivan, Ivan on Tech. I, I, I'm not promoting him. I'm nothing to do with him. I, I suggest people listen to him about uh, – it's what they're trying to do, Greg, is it's not utopian because I don't, I don't think that's possible in the physical time, but um, a world-neutral monetary system where no country or no hegemony holds – ownership we can't buy it's decentralized that's the beauty of decentralization there's no company there's no ceo you can't own it you can't take it over and one of the beauties of, of the tech is it's pretty difficult to stop hmm. so like they that. say so they say my understanding of the technology is maybe there is quantum computers in the future and they'll be able to crack anything I don't know. But like I say, it's only what I've read. And I think people should take take a good look at it if they've just wondered. That's all. Uh, and I'm all for silver. I used to collect coins a lot. I love silver coins. I'm English. The English silver penny was minted in the 6th century, 7th century. I mean, I know. And I'm still waiting for my, 200, my 140 pennies back. They robbed off me coincidentally in 1971 when we went to decimalization now what else happened in 1971 i'll leave you with that i'll see you later great thanks for the show thanks yeah cheers staff julian jeff uh, and of course gregory manorino thank you for your time that you gave us it's been a, a really good interesting talk and we should actually do it again sometime uh, is there yes, anything you'd like to anything you'd like to leave on any messages or anything like that feel free to well, it was, I'll leave you off with, with I do every Friday. Love each other, care about each other, be charitable people. We're all we got. Period. The end. Beautiful. <clears throat> well done, Greg. I enjoyed that. Thanks very much. Cheers, Greg. Yeah. See Cheers. you, mate. Bye. Keep playing. Thanks, Keep man. playing. Pick that guitar up. Keep playing, man. I will. <laughs> <laughs> Stay awesome. Cheers, guys. Thanks, mate.